Hello, this is Tractor Whisperer. We've done the uh, Perkins 3152 testing. We've run a compression test, check valve clearances, had uh, decent compression on cylinders two and three. That was around 275, 300 pounds, which is low. Um, cylinder number one held zero. So our next step was to pull the head. So here we go, got the head pulled. I'm gonna take the camera, see if I can show you a few things. As you see, right here, you can actually see a little piece of slag right there behind it, ever so much. And the valve seat doesn't look completely round. Right here, it appears the head has had a weld on it. Um, this valve here, uh, did not hold, uh, was not closing all the way for sure. This valve right here, which is an exhaust valve, I poured a gasoline in the exhaust port and it ran out there, so this valve leaking too. And then also, if you look right here, I'm gonna turn this valve ever so slow and hope you can see the imperfections in the seat. It's bad um, as well. I'm going to do a Dicom blue test on it next and just see how it looks after that. Okay, I've got uh, Dicom, which is a dye, purple colored dye. I, I'm assuming you can see that on there. And also, I put it on the head of the valve as well. Now I'm going to work it back and forth and just see if uh, what kind of impression it makes. Set the camera down for a minute. Aiming at the head there. I think that this should make an impression that we'll visibly be able to see. We should be able to see it both on the valve and on the valve seat. It's so poor they seated that it's not hardly making an impression anywhere. The only place that it's hitting is right in here, right where this weld, and this little bend, what it appears to be a bend in the seat. That's the only place it's hitting. And it also hits, it hits about halfway around. And I'll show you, I'll move the camera right around here too. If you look at it, the valve seat, I'm gonna put my light on there as well. Right where the bump is here at the bottom, it hits. And you look at it, it's actually removed the die. You see the silver, but you get over to this side and you see it's all still got the purple die still on it. The valve is the same way. show you a project here that we're working on our on our Perkins project these are the combustion chamber caps on the indirect injected Perkins 3152 these are actually replacement ones because you see they're domed here on the back side that little bulge that you see in the cap typically they're flat on the original ones the previous owner had bought new caps trying to get the indirect combustion chambers to seal. These are the new gaskets that's available. They're made by Spirex. There's other people make these gaskets too, but they're all very, very similar in the fact that they're triangular shaped. Um, the original gasket was a round gasket like this. And if you notice, this, this particular gasket's not round any longer. Even though it's original gasket, it protrudes this direction some, it's oblong. And the reason of that shape is even though it was under this the cap, like this, it was mashing it up against the head and had three, three, eight fine thread bolts, for 35 foot pounds torquing that down, it still tried to blow out and it, probably leaking 
Uh, they're also relatively soft. They bend easy. I'm speculating, but I think this triangular shape was gone to in order for it to have more support in between the studs. This copper can hold that round. The problem with it is the bearing surface is much greater when these plates are flat. We put them on the machine, on the lathe, we've actually machined a step in them, the silver and black part. Silver part being this, this section here, and the black part being this black ring that you see just around the projection part. And that, we actually machined the silver part down 20 thousandths of an inch in order to decrease the inches of compression on this copper gasket. So the load right on this black part would be much greater now with this 20 thousandth step in it, which is the thickness of the gasket. And we'd be able to uh, make this seal. Uh, the previous owner had actually doubled up gaskets. This is the old one. You see this part where it's shiny. He put this gasket next to the cap then this gasket next to the head in order to do the same thing we've done here. It didn't really work well. I've seen people do it and have some success with it, but it tries to do exactly that. It tries to blow out. You see that their regular shape on that ring. So this step is a step that will cure your indirect injection cap from leaking. This, I've, I've annealed these, made them soft, and put them on and and I've had some success with that but it worries me that uh, we've also lost some of the tensile strength to keep this thing from bulging so bulging such as this that bulge and it leaking outside so that's a good fix I've had great success with it no comebacks after I've done this process to them and the, the hole that you see with a tapped hole, that's a hole, I actually chuck it up on the lathe on this round part, drill the center hole in the center, and I'm able to put a long bolt in it and then chuck up on the bolt in order to do the machine work. This is what it will look like. I actually put a bolt in it, flush, put a washer and lock washer on it, crank it down good and tight. That'll never come out. And I've restored the integrity of this bowl, this bowl here. I've restored the integrity of it by doing that. And it's a good fix on the Perkins 3152. This is the initial setup for the machine work to create center line on these combustion chamber caps so we can do the machine work on the face side of the caps for the 20 thousandths reveal to improve the ceiling component of these caps. I just wanted to show you a little bit of the work. Here's the tapping, which enables us to chuck up to turn the other side. Uh, we're back on the Perkins 3152 repair uh, we diagnosed we had low compression on one cylinder head had a weld in its crack valve seat bad so we just elected to replace the head but one of the things that's pretty commonplace lots of times you'll unbolt these manifolds that have cracked ears this is exhaust manifold here in the vise and i'll show you how to make a uh, a repair on these when you don't have one of course you can order one but you can make a pretty, pretty nifty repair. Uh, and I'll show you a couple of things to do. I'm gonna weld this up, put a washer over the top of it, and this will be good as new. This air, if you'll notice, this, this one's cracked as well. I'm gonna fix both sides. So, 
We're about ready to crank it, the heads, the new heads on back on the tractor, so we're not far off from doing that. All right, here's the manifold repair. This material here has actually been a U-shaped piece that fit over it like this. Um, this one was actually the ear that had the crack in it. And this one was able to actually I grind this, this metal down where it's not quite as wide as these flanges that you see. And that way you got enough material. You can weld it on the inside and you can also weld it on the back side as well as the ends. I let it lap down good way. I'm not saying this is a great, great repair, but usually you'll never have to get back in them um, to do anything to them. This will certainly get you by. They're cracked in this manner, which is very commonplace. Uh, and the indirect injected manifold is different than the direct invent. Both of these laying in the floor here, the direct injected 3152 and the they're slightly different. So there you go. So I'm gonna put it on the tractor and we'll crank it. Tractors together. Uh, I've bled it. Um, it's cold here today. Right now, that's a 10,000th gauge. And my compression combustion chamber caps, as you see right there, the 10 is between the copper is between the copper and the cap. That's where we cut the reveals. Remember there, we cut them 20 thousandths deep. This copper gasket right here actually measures 20. So that means we've got 10 thousandths of crush at the rings for these to seal. Uh, so there we go. I'm gonna crank the tractor here just so. Perkins is running, running on all three cylinders. I don't know if I'm happy with it or not. Brought it back to the dead. It, uh, once we got number one firing, it developed some blow by out of the crankcase. We ran it, actually put water on it, ran it for half an hour or so, got it up to temperature. It, uh, it's less than perfect, and it's too nice not to go ahead. We're gonna pull it back down and put uh, pistons and, and uh, new cylinder wall sleeves in it. Uh, these are chrome cylinder wall sleeves. Uh, they, they're less than perfect, but we've gone too far with this engine, new head and all. We're, we're gonna go ahead and rebuild it because we have plans to use it on a, another tractor. It's on this donor frame right now just so we can work on it. But the conclusion is we're gonna do a rebuild.